Welcome to our lecture online and here's our next uh, video on how to look at chemical reactions and the types of chemical reactions and here we're talking about displacement reactions and here's the third one of the displacement reactions where we have halogens being displaced and of course remember what halogens are those are the ones in the 7a column towards the right of the periodic table right next to what we used to call the noble gases um, I guess we still call them that uh, we, call, we used to call them inert gases, that's what I was thinking about. And of course then we found out that some of them sometimes react in a subtle way and so they're not completely inert, so we call them noble gases. And so it's the elements just to the left of those which have a very high propensity of donating electrons. But the ones that are on top are more likely to do that, the ones at the bottom are less likely to do that, to donate electrons, which means that the ones that are higher up on the periodic table can displace the ones that are lower on the periodic table. Just like in the activity series, the metals that are higher up are more likely to displace the metals that are lower down on that series. So just kind of the same concept. So if we think about a displacement reaction, we have some element being introduced to something that's already bonded together placed in an aqueous solution. Typically when it goes in aqueous solution they dissociate into ions but then you notice that uh, the, uh, the C ion will then connect with the A ion, A ion and then precipitate out the B ion. Sometimes that becomes a solid, sometimes that becomes a liquid but it becomes an element then. And again it's due to the exchange of electrons. Electrons will be given from A to B because they're higher up on the on the periodic table, more likely to donate electrons. So A will donate electrons to B, B will come out as a precipitate, and A will then join up with C or stay in the aqueous solution as an ion. So A and B are both halogens. For example, if we have chlorine gas, chlorine is uh, right up here in the periodic table, the second one from the top, underneath fluorine, and it's introduced as a gas to an aqueous solution, so probably bubbled in, uh, with uh, potassium bromine in the solution. Now, of course, potassium bromine will dissociate into potassium and bromide, uh, bromine ions. But then what happens is the potassium will now bond with the chlorine and bromine will be released as a separate liquid in the aqueous solution. Likewise, if we introduce chlorine gas into a solution that contains sodium iodine, sodium iodine will of course dissociate, but the chlorine ions will donate their electrons to sodium, um, not to sodium, to iodine, because iodine is lower on the list than chlorine, and so sodium and chlorine will remain in the solution, and iodine will precipitate out as a solid. The actual equation, of course, is that once you place iodine and sodium in an in a aqueous solution, they will dissociate into two uh, different ions. The chlorine gas is bubbled in. The chlorine gas will give the electrons to the iodine. Ion will become neutral, so it will become a, an, an atom, and then it will precipitate out as a solid, while the chlorine gas will then remain in the aqueous solution as an ion, along with the sodium, to have the balance between negative and positive ions in the aqueous solution. So that's exactly what happens. So again, when the displacement reaction occurs, typically what happens is an exchange of electrons from the metal that was introduced, or in this case from the halogen that was introduced, and donates that to the other halogen that's already there, which is lower on the activity table. It then precipitates out, and the, 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 the halogen that was introduced then remains in the aqueous solution, minus the electrons, therefore, as an ion. And there is the, what we call the halogen displacement reaction.